Hey, this is Coach Reeves, and today we're going to solve quadratic inequalities. Now, we're going to have to factor a little bit, so I hope you remember how to factor. And there's going to be a couple of steps in here, but once you remember the steps, it's going to be pretty simple. Nothing's really difficult, it just takes a little bit of time. All right, so let's look at number one. I need to get this equal to a zero. So I need to move the seven to the other side. So we're gonna go plus seven, plus seven. I've got x squared plus nine x plus 20 is greater than zero. I need to factor this. So we're gonna factor this into two parentheses. We know that this tells us, this tells us that the signs are gonna be the same. They're both going to be pluses, so we put a plus sign and a plus sign. We break down the x squared as x times x, and we're going to break down our 20. Remember how we factor this. This is a positive 20, so we're going to add. My combinations are 1 and 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. We're looking for a combination added together that will give us 9, and we're going to choose 4 and 5. Now, I know this is not equal to zero. It's an inequality, but we're still going to take the opposite or put these parentheses equal to zero, just like when we were solving this. And you would find out, to speed this up, you'll find out that this is going to end up being a negative four, and this is going to be a negative five, okay? Now, we're going to go to a number line to help us solve this, to finish this out. So we're going to come over here. Draw your little number line. We're going to put these two numbers on the number line. Put them in the, in the correct spot. So my smaller number is negative 5. Then I have a negative 4. What I need you to do is we're going to separate this into sections. All right, so what I want to ask you to do is section this off. Here's the section. Draw a broken line. There's a section, okay? Now look at your symbol. This is an inequality symbol. There is not a bar underneath here, so we're gonna have open circles on our graph. So I'm gonna have an open circle, open circle, okay? Now I'm gonna ask you to pick a number on the number line other than negative five and negative four. We're gonna substitute it in to see if it makes a true or a false statement. The number that we want to pick, unless it's one of these, is zero. We always pick zero because it's the easiest thing to work with, okay? So we're going to pick the, the number zero. And look, if you're looking on a number line, the number zero would be over there in that zone. There's three zones. One, two, three. We're picking the number zero. It's going to be in this zone over here. So when we substitute it in, all right, the easiest place to substitute it in is right here. Zero squared. Zero squared is zero. Nine times zero is zero. Zero plus 20 is 20. So this is what we're looking at. After you substitute the zero, you're going to look at 20 is greater than zero. Is this a true statement? You've substituted it in your number. Is this a true statement? Is 20 greater than zero? You would say yes. That means that any number, any number that you picked in this zone over here all the way to infinity would work. It would make a true statement. Just to prove a point, I'm going to pick a number over here. I'm going to pick the number negative 6. Negative 6 is in this far outside zone. Watch what happens when I do that. If I substitute it, I could put it here in the original equation, but I'm going to put it right here. It does not matter. This is the factored form. We're going to say negative 6 plus 4 is a negative 2. We're going to say negative 6 plus 5 is a negative 1. When you multiply, you get 2. Is 2 greater than 0? You would say, yes, this makes a true statement. That means that this, any number in this zone, is going to work. Now, here's the thing you need to remember. 
you alternate zones as, as they work. Like this will be a true statement. This is going to be false. This is going to be true. You can't ever have true back to back in your zones. It always alternates zone between true and false, true and false on down the line. So that means anything in here will be false. If I picked negative 4.5 and I substituted it in, it would not make a true statement. Now that you have your zones, what does this mean? This means anything from negative 5, anything from negative 5 going to negative infinity will make a true statement. Anything from negative 4 to positive infinity will make a true statement. This is not good. This is not part of the solution. So we're going to write our answer in interval notation. Okay? So what does that look like in interval notation? We're going to go from negative infinity to negative 5. This is an open circle, so it's going to get a soft bracket. We have a gap. So we're going to have this U for union, and then we're going to go from negative 4 all the way to positive infinity. This is how we're going to write our answer. Okay, so what are we going to do? Just a quick recap. If we don't have a 0, we're going to get a 0, and we're going to factor and solve. And once you solve, you put these numbers on a number line and separate it into zones. And then we'll, we'll substitute the zero in and we'll find out which zone works, okay? I did not have to do this zone. I did not have to pick negative six. As soon as I found out that this was a true statement, I knew it would be true, false, true. You always alternate zones. Let's go to another problem, see if you understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I have to get this ready. I have to move everything to one side, but first I'm going to distribute. So I'm going to distribute my 4 and get 8a. Distribute my 4 and get minus 12. I need to move these to the other side so I can get a 0. So we're going to move this to the other side. We're going to go minus 8a, minus 8a. We're looking at a squared minus 8a. I need to move the 12 to the other side. We're going to go plus 12, plus 12. And this will be less than or equal to 0. Now I'm ready to factor this. We set our signs in our parentheses. This will tell us that the signs are the same. This tells us they're both going to be minuses. We break down a squared as a times a. And my choice is, now this is a positive 12. Since it's positive, we're going to add. My choices are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Which combination added together will give me the 8 I need? And we're going to pick 2 and 6. Now remember, when we're solving this, the quick way we did this was we just took the opposite opposite. Okay, so this is going to give us a positive 2, and this is going to give us a positive 6. These are the numbers that I put on my number line. So we go draw a number line. My numbers are 2 and 6, so we're going to say 2. We're going to say 6. I have a bar... Remember, there's a bar underneath my inequality symbol. So now we're going to have closed circles. These are going to be closed circles. We're going to separate into zones. So I have my broken line. I have my three zones. What number do we want to pick or substitute in to see if the zone is good or bad, which makes a true or a false statement. We're going to pick the number zero. So we're going to substitute a zero. The number zero is over here on the number line. The number zero would be in this zone right here. Okay? So we substitute in the zero. 
We can substitute it. I think it's easiest. I think it's easiest if I substitute it into this part of the equation. Zero squared is zero. Negative eight times zero is zero plus 12. So you have to ask yourself, this is what we're looking at. Is 12, is 12 less than or equal to zero? No, this is a false statement. This is not true. So this zone, that zone is bad. It made a false statement. That means the next one has to be good. Remember what I said, they alternate between good and bad. So this would be bad. This is gonna be good. This will be bad. This is your solution. The good section is your solution. So anything between two and six will make a true statement. So how do we write our answer in interval notation? Well, we have a closed circle, which means we're gonna get a hard bracket. We're gonna go from two to six. We have another closed circle, so we get a hard bracket. There is my solution in interval notation. Let's try one more. Takes a little bit of work, a little bit of shooter property. This one's gonna take a few steps. I'm gonna go 2a times a is 2a squared. 2a times six is a positive 12a. Greater than five, we're gonna distribute that. Negative a times a is a negative a squared. Negative a times two is a negative 2a. I need to move everything to where I have a zero. So we're going to move to the left. We're going to say plus a squared plus a squared, which is going to give me 3a squared plus 2a plus 2a. This is going to give me a positive 14a. We're gonna move the five, minus five, minus five, so that's gonna give me minus five is greater than zero. Now I'm ready to factor. This tells me, this says that the signs are gonna be different. Signs are gonna be different. The bigger number gets the plus sign. Signs are gonna be different the bigger number gets this plus sign. But look, look at what we're gonna do. We have an A value that's greater than one. We're gonna to have to use the box method. So we're gonna to go to the box method. We're gonna put three A squared in this corner. We're gonna put the negative five in this corner. We're gonna multiply. 3 times negative 5 is a negative 15. Since it's a negative number, you're going to subtract. My choices are 1 times 15, 3 times 5. Which combination subtracted will give us the 14? The 1 and the 15. But remember what we said. The bigger number gets this sign. 15 gets the plus sign. The 1 gets the minus sign. So we're going to go a positive 15a, we're going to go a negative 1a. Now look, what do we have in common? Going up, all I have is the letter a in common. Going up, I have the number 5 in common. Coming across, I have a 3 and an a in common. Going across, I have a negative sign and nothing else. And when we don't have anything in common, we use the number one, because one goes into everybody. Everybody has a one in common. So here's my a plus five. Here's my three a minus one. And remember, when we solve these, we did it the quick way, or you can just put each parentheses equal to zero, but this is gonna end up being a negative five, because we took the opposite. We take the opposite and get a positive one, but we have to divide by three. 
These are my solutions. These are the numbers that I put on the number line. So we go to the number line. Put them in the correct order. Negative 5 is the smallest. I have a positive 1 third. There is not a bar underneath my inequality symbol, so we're going to have open circles. Open circles. We're going to divide into zones. Okay, and then we're going to pick the number zero. We're going to substitute the zero. Which zone does zero fall into? Zero falls right in between these two. Zero's going to be in that middle zone. So let's substitute the zero and see if it makes a true statement. So this is where I like to substitute. I like to go right here. And I go zero squared. Zero squared is zero. Three times zero is still zero. Fourteen times zero is zero. Minus 5 greater than 0. So here's what you're asking yourself. Is negative 5 greater than 0? And you're saying, no, that's not true. Negative 5 is not greater than 0. So that means this zone is not true. That means the other ones have to be true because we alternate zones. Remember this. So that means this is good. That means this is good. That means anything to the left is going to be good. Anything to the right is going to be good. So how do we write this? Well, to the left is going to be negative infinity all the way to negative 5. Open circle gets me a soft bracket. We have a gap, so we put a U here to hold the gap. We have an open circle, so we have a soft bracket. We're going to be at one-third. And then we're going to go to positive infinity. And there's your solution set in interval notation for this inequality. Okay? Remember, get a zero, factor, solve to determine what you put on your number line. Divide it into sections. And then you substitute the zero to see if your section is good or bad. And remember, we always alternate between good and bad in our zones or our sections. Okay? And then finally, you convert it to interval notation. Not that hard once you remember the pattern. Okay? Hey, there's some problems to take a few steps, but I think you're going to be okay. If you need help, just email us, step in at a Zoom, and we'll help you. Good luck.